So I have something pretty interesting here. And yeah, even though this looks like dental floss, it's not, trust me. Or at least I hope so. But no, seriously, now these are the new AirPods. So the new wireless earbuds from Apple, and these have been introduced at the iPhone 7 event back in September, but they have been delayed over and over again, and they've only been released in December. Now, apparently the delay was because of two reasons. The main one was the case, and then the second one was, well, you actually have two headphones instead of just one. So you actually have to sing to send the audio from the iPhone to both headphones at the same time. Uh, unlike other Bluetooth headphones, which actually have just one headphone, and that's basically linked with the other ones. They only have to send the signal to this one, and this one automatically sends the signal through the cable to the other one. But here you have two separate headphones. So yeah, they had, they had some issues with the delay. Apparently those issues have been resolved. So the AirPods are finally here. Now I've been using these Apple AirPods for actually two full weeks now. And I asked you guys on Twitter when I got these, what you wanted me to test out. So I pretty much tested everything that you've asked me. And I've also tested pretty much everything that I can think of. So hey everyone, welcome to the Zenoff Tech. I'm Daniel and welcome to my full Apple AirPods in-depth review. So in this video, I'll be covering everything from the unboxing experience to the first look and setup, how they compare to the Apple AirPods that you get with your iPhone 7, how they feel, how they sound, how's the battery life, all the special interesting features that the Apple AirPods come with and also all the downsides of the AirPods. So yeah, enjoy. Okay, so starting off with the unboxing experience first, the AirPods come in this really nice looking white box. And I have to say that this is a pretty large box considering how small the headphones inside are. So it's shorter than the iPhone boxes, however it's wider and comparing it to the Apple Watch Series 2 box, you can see that there is not much of a difference in size between the two. At least not a size difference you would expect. On the front we have an image of the AirPods, Apple logo on the right and left sides, we have an AirPods branding on the top, on the bottom we get a serial number and a compatibility list. So these work with any device running iOS 10 or later macOS Sierra and watchOS 3.0. And finally on the back we get a listing of everything that we get inside, so Apple AirPods with charging case and lightning to USB cable. So let me just get my knife and cut the seal and the seal has been broken so let's lift the top and the first thing that we get inside is this booklet as always designed by Apple in California and inside that we get a quick start guide which basically tells you how to set up the AirPods. So step one, just turn on Bluetooth on your device. Step two, open the case not further than five centimeters away from your iPhone. And step three, enjoy listening. So that seems to be it. Yeah, this seems to be a very straightforward pairing process. Now this booklet also tells you that you can indeed sync them with pretty much any device that has Bluetooth, so it doesn't actually have to be an Apple device. All you have to do is simply hold the pair button on the back, and then finally you activate Siri by double tapping, and it also tells you how to charge them. Besides this, we also get a warranty and a safety guide, and we also get a handling and safety guide. We don't get any Apple stickers because unfortunately this is an accessory. And then we finally get to the fun part. So the actual AirPods inside this carrying case, which I'll be covering in a second. And besides this, we get a lightning to USB cable, which you use to charge the case, which eventually will charge headphones. And yeah, that's pretty much everything that's inside the box. So we don't have anything left. Now let's move on to section number two. Let's take a first look and also set up the new Apple AirPods. So taking a first look at a charging case, I have to say this thing is really, really small. I was expecting this to be small, but I wasn't expecting this to be this tiny. On the back, we get this pairing button among with the silver hinge designed by Apple in California, assembled in China as always. And then on the bottom, we get the charging port. So this is actually a lightning port. Now, fun fact, this charging port was actually initially designed to be a USB-C charging port instead of a lightning port. So when I plug in a lightning cable, take a look at how much space there's still left inside. Seems like the port was initially designed for a much larger connector, but now if I take a USB-C cable, this one actually seems to have the perfect size for this port. Now at the moment, having a lightning port is a much better idea than having USB-C since the iPhone, the iPhone 7, also has a lightning port. But in the future, hopefully this will change to USB-C just like the iPhone, which I do hope will switch to USB-C soon, hopefully with the iPhone 8, just because pretty much everything is USB-C now and even connecting the, the iPhone 7 to the new MacBooks is kind of a pain. You do need an adapter, which is quite funny since they're both designed by Apple, but yeah. But yeah, lightning port at the moment and hopefully a USB-C port in the future with the new iPhones. So let me just open the case now and this is actually magnetic, so this is quite nice. And the AirPods inside the case are also held in by magnets, so they will stay in place, they won't wobble around while in the case. And there's also an LED indicator inside 
that basically lights up green or orange depending on the charge of the AirPods. And when you don't have the AirPods inside a case, that light would actually show the charge of the case. So now let me just take the AirPods out of the charging case and set them up. Let's just see how easy that is. And whoa, just take a look at this. So I just opened the case and literally one to two seconds after the setup window opened, on my iPhone, so connect, and I think that's it. So I think they're already connected. So whoa, that was that was really really fast. I'm really impressed. Now just take a look at this. So whenever you open or close the case, the iPhone instantaneously detects the headphones, and when you take them out of the case, they're already paired up. Now in terms of how the AirPods look, they do look really really similar to the AirPods that you get with your iPhone 7 and basically all the previous iPhone models ever since the iPhone 5. So the AirPods do indeed look really really similar to Apple's earpods. So the only design differences are that, well, first, you don't have a cable since they're completely wireless, and the body is also longer and a bit thicker because this is where all the text of the microphone, the accelerometer, the proximity sensor, and even the battery, this is basically where everything is. So that's why you have the slightly longer and thicker body. Then the AirPods also lack a dedicated control section, which I'll be covering in a second. And then finally, they're also much more expensive than the AirPods. So $160 or 160 pounds versus $29 or 29 pounds. So yeah, there's a pretty big difference here. It's actually five times more expensive, actually even more than that, considering that you do get your AirPods when you buy your iPhone. So you don't really have to buy them separately. So in the end, are they actually worth it when compared to the AirPods? Now let's talk about how the AirPods actually feel when you wear them. And I have to say they feel really, really similar to Apple's AirPods. So I haven't actually noticed any big difference between the two in terms of how they feel I have to say that the AirPods are noticeably lighter than the AirPods, and that's because they don't have any cable. So they're only four, by the way, they're only four grams. They're really, really light. And once you once you wear them for a few minutes, for like 20 minutes, you actually forget that you have them. So they're really, really light and I actually like that. I also haven't had any issues with the AirPods falling out. So for me personally, they were really, really comfortable. They're basically, they basically feel the same as the AirPods. So go ahead and try a pair of AirPods, and if they fit you well, if they don't fall out, then you'll have the exact same experience with the AirPods. Now, a few people have said that they actually kept falling. That never happened to me, to be honest. I did go running with them for a few times and I never ever had this issue. But yeah, go ahead and try the AirPods that you got with your iPhone. And if you like them, if they fit your ears well, then the AirPods will also do the same. Okay, so the AirPods, especially for me, they actually feel pretty good. But how do they actually sound? I'm guessing most of you care a lot about how these things really sound. So in terms of the sound, I have to say that they actually feel pretty good. So they don't feel they don't feel amazing. So you won't be blown away by the sound quality, but they don't feel bad either. In fact, in terms of sound quality, they're actually really, really similar to Apple's earpods that we get with the iPhone 7. So not uh, not a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack ones that we had before, but the lightning ones that we get with the iPhone 7. So they're really, really similar to those. I said the lightning ones because those they do have a DAC included and they do sound a bit louder and also a tiny bit crispier than the 3.5 millimeter ones. Now, something that really surprised me on the AirPods was actually the bass. So the bass is actually quite a lot better than on the AirPods. Now, just to give you a better idea when it comes to the sound quality, if let's say on a scale from one to 10, if the Apple AirPods were about a six, these are about a 6.8 to seven. So they're not, they're not a lot better, but they still are better. So you will actually notice the improvements over the Apple AirPods. Now, a pretty cool thing about the AirPods is that each of them has its own individual microphone. So for example, if you're in a call and there's a lot of noise coming from the right side, then the headphones would actually switch microphone to the left one. And if you take one of the headphones out, then the microphone will automatically switch to the one that's still in your ear. Now, some of you might be wondering, how's the actual sound quality of the microphones? And it's actually, well, it's nothing impressive. So I'll let you guys decide. This is a microphone test of the Apple AirPods. And this is a microphone test with the left AirPods. So I've taken the right one out of my ear and this is how the left one sounds. And this is a microphone test of the Apple AirPods. So the previous wired headphones, and these are the ones with a lightning connection. And finally, these are the Apple AirPods, the previous models. So the ones that actually come with a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And I'm actually using an iPhone 6S to record it. And now here's the built-in microphone on the iPhone 7 Plus. Yeah, let me know in the comments which one do you think is better. Okay, so the AirPods, they do feel quite good. They also sound pretty good, but how's the actual battery life? Because the battery life is also really important when it comes to wireless headphones. So Apple actually advertises five hours of battery life from the AirPods, which is actually okay. So it's not amazing. It's a tiny bit worse than what you would get with other wireless earpods, which would give you about six to eight hours of battery life. However, a pretty cool thing about the AirPods 
is this carrying case. So this is the carrying case, and this is also a charging case. So the, this thing also charges the headphones, and the charging case can give you a full 24 hours of additional battery life. And keep in mind that when I say five hours, that's five hours of audio playback with the volume at 50%. At least that's according to Apple. Now, if you have them on and you're not listening to anything, so they're basically in standby, then they drop about 5% battery life each hour which is actually not that bad. Now, once the case does run out, you do have to charge it. So you charge it by the lightning connector that I talked about on the bottom of the case. And depending on your usage, you can actually get up to about one week of battery life without having to charge a case, which I would say is actually pretty good. And if you really need a quick charge for the headphones, 15 minutes of charging inside a case would actually give you three hours of playback, which is pretty impressive. Now, some of you might be wondering how long does this case take to fully charge from 0% up to 100%? And from my experience, it was about a full hour, so about an hour on, on the iPad charger. Now, there are a few issues about the battery life of the AirPods, which I'll be covering in the issues and downsides section. But now let's take a look at all the special features that the AirPods come with. Well, the main feature is that they're completely wireless, so they connect to the iPhone via Bluetooth, and they have something pretty cool inside, and that's the W1 chip. So with the W1 chip inside, the AirPods are basically connected to all of your Apple devices at the same time, as long as you're signed into iCloud, and then you can simply switch the audio from, let's say, your Apple Watch to your Mac and your iPhone. All you have to do is simply change the sound input source, so you can do that in the control center on the iPhone. You can also easily do that on the Apple Watch while listening to music or in the main menu, and then on a Mac, simply go to the Bluetooth icon or to the audio source and simply change it from there. So this is, in my opinion, the best feature of the AirPods, because unlike other Bluetooth headphones, you don't actually have to disconnect them and repair them when you want to connect them to a new device. You simply go to the menu, one click, and that's it. You're already connected to your new device. Now, even though this sounds really, really cool, and it actually is, it's not actually unique to the AirPods. So you can also find this W1 chip inside the new Beats Solo 3 wireless. You can also find it in the Powerbeats 3 wireless, the Beats X, and many, many more models to come. Now, in terms of the signal strength, I was actually really, really impressed. So just to answer some of the questions that you've asked me on Twitter. So first off, in terms of the connection range of these, I was really, really impressed. So I was about, I walked away from my iPhone and I was about 20 meters away from my iPhone and that was in my flat. So I actually had walls in between and the connection never dropped. So this was, this was really, really impressive. I never had any playback issues, any connection drops while I was away from my iPhone. So very, very impressive results here when it comes to uh, the connection strength. Now, some of you have asked me, how's video playback using the AirPods? Because usually with Bluetooth speakers and Bluetooth headphones, there's a slight delay when watching videos or movies. And to my surprise, there was actually no delay, so no noticeable delay when watching YouTube videos or when watching a full, a full movie. So in this regard, I was really, really impressed with the AirPods. The only place where I could notice a delay was when editing video. So it seems like the AirPods just don't have the record bandwidth for a full 4K real-time video edit. But even when it comes to editing 4K videos, the delay wasn't that bad. So it was actually less than a second delay. And I've noticed something interesting. So at first, when testing 4K video editing, the AirPods, they actually had a massive delay. So three to four seconds. Then the audio quality actually dropped since they wanted to keep up with the playback. And once they were perfectly synced, the audio quality increased again and everything was perfect apart from that 200 or so millisecond delay. So you can definitely use the AirPods when it comes to watching videos or movies and even videos in 4K on YouTube. I've tried it as well and I haven't had any issues, any noticeable delay with the AirPods. Again, the only noticeable delay was when editing video, but I'm guessing that if you want to edit videos, you will probably use some studio monitor headphones, not some Apple AirPods. Okay, so up until this point, we haven't had any exclusive features to the AirPods. One of them could be the real-time audio playback and videos, uh, but other than that, we haven't had anything. So any special exclusive features of the AirPods. Well, you've probably noticed that the AirPods, they don't come with any buttons, any controls at all. So if you want to change your song or if you want to decrease or increase the volume, what you have to do is double tap on them and this will activate Siri. And then you have to say, Siri, decrease the volume, next song, repeat, shuffle, and so on. Now, for me personally, this is quite of a big issue because if you're in a quiet place like a library, you just cannot say, hey, Siri, decrease the volume, increase the volume, next song, repeat, shuffle, and so on. So if you cannot use Siri or if you don't want to use Siri, then you'll have to use your iPhone to increase the volume, decrease the volume, skip the song, and pause the song, and so on. Now, speaking of pausing the song, if you go to Bluetooth settings on your iPhone, you can actually switch a double tap gesture from Siri to play pause, now, one of my favorite features in terms of the AirPods is this one. So remember when I said that the AirPods, they actually come with an accelerometer and a proximity sensor inside. Well, those two things are actually useful for when you want to do this. So when you take one of the headphones out, the music automatically stops 
and when you put it back in, the music automatically resumes. So this is really, really useful, especially when you want to preserve battery life or when you just want to play or pause the song without having to take your iPhone out of the pocket or double tap to activate Siri and so on. Now another really cool feature is automatic source switch. So this works on both the iPhone and the Mac. So here's an example. On my Mac, I have my Audio-Technica M70Xs plugged in and I've also connected my AirPods via the Bluetooth menu. And when I put the AirPods into my ears, the source automatically switches to the AirPods. And when I take them out, the source automatically switches back to my Audio-Technica headphones. So I'm really, really impressed by how well and also how fast this works. So it basically works in an instance. I have two more interesting features that I want to mention. So the first one is that if you have an Apple Watch, you can actually connect your AirPods automatically to the Apple Watch. So if you go to the gym, for example, you don't need your iPhone anymore because you can actually have music on your Apple Watch. So yeah, you don't need to take your iPhone anymore, especially if you have a Series 2 because the Series 2 actually has a GPS. And by the way, if you want to know more about the Apple Watch Series 2, I've actually done an unboxing and an initial review of that. So the link for that is in the description. And then finally, they also work but pretty much any device. So if you have a device that has Bluetooth and pretty much all devices have Bluetooth, you can actually connect those headphones by simply holding the pairing button on the charging case. And that's basically how you connect them to an Android smartphone. That's how you connect them to something like a PlayStation 4, a TV, basically even your car, basically anything you can think of that has Bluetooth, you can connect those things to that device. Unfortunately, most of those special features, such as double tap to activate Siri, or when you take one of the headphones out of your ears, the music, the music stops, you don't actually have those on other devices except for Apple devices. So on Android, for example, if you double tap, instead of Siri, you have the play pause gesture. And yeah, that's pretty much the only thing that they can do. They won't instantly connect, they won't auto switch. So these are only exclusive features for Apple devices. Okay, so so far the Apple AirPods do seem pretty good. Actually, they seem really, really good. Now I have some, I've had some issues with the AirPods and I have some downsides that I wanna mention. So here's the final section of this video, downsides and issues. Now for me personally, my main downside is the lack of any dedicated controls. So it doesn't even have a dedicated volume control, which means that you will have to use your iPhone for pretty much anything from adjusting the volume, next song and so on. Now a solution to this would be, if you have an Apple Watch, you can use your Apple Watch and adjust the volume, go to the next song, see the playlist and everything on your Apple Watch's display. So you can do that if you have an Apple Watch. In my opinion, Apple should have made the AirPods slightly bigger and they should have added a touchpad so that when you slide down, you decrease the volume, slide up, increase the volume, slide right, next song, slide left, previous song, and so on. And by the way, when you double tap to activate Siri, that actually uses the accelerometer. So it doesn't have a touchpad or anything. The accelerometer detects the movement, the double tap, and it doesn't actually work all the time. And you do have to tap pretty hard uh, for the AirPods to detect the double tap. And by the way, you do have to double tap right in the middle because otherwise it won't detect the double tap at all. Now, another issue that I wanna mention with the AirPods is that if you're in a really, really quiet room and you have no music playing in the background or anything, so if the AirPods are basically on idle, you will actually hear a static noise in the background. And that's because this is normal, first off, because uh, the Bluetooth connection tries to ping the phone over and over again. So you will actually hear this with most Bluetooth speakers or Bluetooth headphones, but yeah, it can actually get annoying after, after a while. Now you're probably wondering what would happen if you actually lose one of these. Well, well, you will pretty much lose it. So there's no, there's no Find My AirPods app or anything. You could essentially put the one that you still have left in the case back into the case and then play a song and increase the volume to the max so that the one that's, I don't know, it's the one that's lost will actually make some noise so you will be able to find it. So this is my solution to finding it. Now, if you don't find it, you can actually buy a replacement from Apple, which will cost you $69 or 69 pounds. And that's actually really expensive because basically for the price of $140 or 140 pounds, well, 138, yes, we'll get two headphones, but you will not get a case, you will not get a lighting cable, and you will not even get a box. So yeah, just, just don't lose it. And I have two more issues that I wanna mention. So the first one is when it comes to disconnect. So in the first week of using these, I've actually had quite a few disconnects. So they actually disconnected four times from my Mac and from my iPhone without any reason. So the audio simply simply stopped and I have to, I actually had to repair them in order for them to work again. So that was, that was quite weird, but I haven't actually had this issue in a week and a half. So I think it might be fixed. And finally, the last issue that I want to mention, this is actually a pretty big one. So a lot of users have reported a really bad, a poor battery life, but not on the AirPods, but on the case. Now, during the first week, the case was pretty much perfect. So I actually never had to charge it during the first week, but then it simply started discharging like crazy. So one day I had 64% at night, and then in the morning I had 36%. So yeah, that, that's a massive battery loss during the night where 
when it should have lost like 2% or so. And by the way, I fixed it. They actually disassembled the AirPods and the case. And they actually reported that when it comes to the case, the manufacturing quality was really, really bad. It was lots of glue inside. They said that this basically indicates a rushed production on the cases. So if you have a battery life issue with a case, it's most likely because of this, because Apple decreased their quality standard just because they wanted to make enough cases for pretty much everyone because the request, the demand for these is just insane. Yeah, they're pretty much out of stock everywhere. But the good news is that if you have an issue with the AirPods or with a case, battery life issue or anything, you can just go to the Apple store and simply get a replacement. That's if they have it in stock. And yeah, in the end, this was a really, really long video. And that's because I wanted to cover pretty much everything you have asked me and everything I could think of in terms of the new Apple AirPods. So I hope that I've answered all of your questions. So in the end, what's my conclusion to all this? Do you actually, is it actually worth buying the new Apple AirPods? I mean, they're not cheap. They're actually pretty expensive, $160 or 160 pounds. Yeah, unfortunately, almost all Apple products now have a one-to-one -one conversion ratio and that's because of Brexit currency adjustments. But at the same price, actually slightly cheaper, you can get the Beats X headphones. Now they have actually been delayed until February just because of the AirPods launch. But I have a feeling that the reason why Apple has delayed the Beats X is because they actually sound better and they also have a slightly better battery life. So eight hours instead of five, but then again, they don't come with a charging case. So, so yeah, this can actually be a bit of a downside for most. And to be honest, the AirPods are really, really nice. Now, if the W1 chip was exclusive to the AirPods, I would say, yeah, just get the AirPods, but it's not. So the Beats X, the Barbies 3 wireless, the Beats Solo 3 and more, they all have the W1 chip, so they will all automatically connect your Apple devices. So I would say that if sound quality is your number one concern, then just don't get the AirPods. I mean, they sound pretty good. However, the Beats X or the Power Beats 3 wireless, they actually might sound better than the AirPods. So get those instead. As I said before, they also have the W1 chip, so they will automatically connect just like the AirPods to all of your Apple devices. And then get the AirPods if you wanna have two independent headphones with actually no cable in between. And yeah, also know that it get the controls. In the end, the biggest plus of the AirPods is the carrying case that also doubles as a charging case. So having 24 hours of battery life in this and then five hours in the headphones is quite a lot. But yeah, there you go. This was my in-depth review of the Apple AirPods. So hopefully I've answered all of your questions. Let me know in the comments if any of you will be getting the AirPods or if any of you already have them. And if you don't have them and if you're not getting them, what headphones do you use at the moment? What are your headphones that you use the most? Let me know in the comments. Feel free to give it a zero like if you have enjoyed it to let me know. And also if you wanna see more videos like this one, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. Finally, don't forget to enable notifications because there's quite a lot of issues with the subscription feed. You can do that by simply tapping on that bell icon next to my channel and you'll be notified whenever I upload a brand new epic video. Also let me know if you're epic enough to make it to the end of this video. And yeah, other than that, this was pretty much it. So thank you all for watching this video. I'm Daniel and I'll see you guys in my next one. Zenoftech, signing out. Cheers.